Okay, so this story is a little wild, and I was advised by a friend of mine who is currently in law school to keep the names out of the story just for the sake of privacy. About a year ago, my husband got a really good job at a company that was about five hours from where we were living. The company paid for us to move, and we were ready to start a new life. We moved to one of those white picket fence suburbs. Everyone had beautiful landscaping, pools, big yards, you name it. My husband was also the type of person you could see living in this area. Such a clean-cut, handsome man he is. Always had a suit on because of his job, and then there was me. I mean, I didn't think this was still a thing in 2023, but apparently I don't have the right look for this type of suburb to some people. Now please don't misunderstand me. Most people in my neighborhood are extremely friendly. There are just a few close-minded people that look at me with those judgmental eyes. You know the kind. So for starters, I have purple hair and the sides of my head are shaved. Now right away, being a woman with this type of hairstyle gets me some looks, both positive and negative. In addition to my hair that I sometimes put up in a mohawk, I'm covered from the neck down with tattoos. It took a little while, but once my neighbors got to know me, they all fell in love with me and now I consider most of them friends. Unfortunately, the rest of my neighborhood hasn't quite come around yet. After a few months in our new home, I decided that staying home every day just wasn't for me. My husband's co-worker lived a few blocks away and they were looking for a babysitter during the day while he and his wife were at work. Since I worked at a daycare in our old town, I jumped at the chance and was excited to get to be around children again. I started watching the kids at their house and right away the neighbor of this family did not like me. It was an older woman, probably in her late 60s, early 70s, Whenever I would be outside with the kids playing, I would look over and see the older woman staring out the window at me. She wouldn't even try to be discreet and just continued to stare. One Friday afternoon when I was leaving, the woman approached me. As I was getting into my car, she came up behind me and told me that she didn't appreciate me corrupting the children that lived in that house. I wasn't offended, honestly. Ever since I was 18 years old, I have always gotten crap for how I looked, so I just smiled and said, well, good thing it isn't your problem. I got into my car and I could see her still talking towards me, but I couldn't hear the muffled voice with my windows up and like I said, I didn't care at all. I just smiled, turned on my Hall & Oates playlist and drove away singing. I looked in the mirror as I drove off and she was still going nuts on the side of the road. That night I told my husband about the encounter and we both laughed. He told me I was a stronger person than him because he would have probably lost it on her and I believe that. Now Monday came and I was watching the kids like always. We went outside at around 11 and were playing in the backyard. About 30 minutes later, one of the kids asked if he could have some lemonade. I told him of course and I went inside to get the drinks for him and his sister. I was inside for maybe one minute, two minutes at the absolute most and when I came outside, the kids were gone. Before panic completely took over, I shouted their names a few times. I was hoping that they were hiding in a tree or something, but after one of the most unsettling minutes of my life, finally, the panic completely took over. I began to run around erratically shouting their names. I ran to the front of the house and I could feel the stress and adrenaline coursing through me. While I surveyed my surroundings, I heard the sound of a woman clearing her throat. I turned around and noticed the older woman standing on her front steps. She told me that she took the children and that they were safe inside her house. She began to tell me all the reasons why I shouldn't be watching the children and why I wasn't suitable to care for them. Instead of smashing this woman's face, which trust me, I wanted to do, I called the police. I tried calling the parents, but neither of them could pick up their phones during work. Thankfully, the police in this town aren't idiots, and once I explained everything to them, they returned the poor kids back into my care. When the kids were walking back into their own home, the woman started to berate me again and verbally beat me down. The police were able to notify the parents, and they rushed home right away. I know they wanted to press charges, and I honestly think they did. I don't know much about it, so please don't quote me on this, but I think she can be charged with breaking and entering and potentially endangering the welfare of a child. Ever since that day, the parents bring the kids over to my house now, and the kids seemed unfazed by the situation, which is the most important thing. 
It just blows my mind that some people can be so ignorant and rude even today. I hope that lady got into a lot of trouble. I'll never forget the fear that I felt losing the children at that moment and the anger that I felt with the woman as she was yelling at me. I'm not super cultured when it comes to the internet, but I think some people would call this entitled hag a Karen, and I have to say, I think I agree. I try very hard on a daily basis to be a good person and just treat people with respect. In my line of work, I find that it gets harder and harder to do this. Ordinarily, I wouldn't share this story, but it, it honestly made me so angry that I felt the need to share it. I work for a grocery store chain that is fairly popular in my region. We stand out among other chains because we sell fresh seafood and meat and we actually have the meat cutters to cut fresh meat daily, which I found to be sort of a lost art. When I was 20, I became an apprentice and I learned how to cut meat and I've been doing that ever since. It's been a pretty decent living for me and I don't have very many complaints. However, anybody who has ever worked in retail or customer service can tell you how horrible some people can be. The only downfall of my job is the never-ending cycle of rude or entitled people. Over the last ten years, I've had my fair share of horrible customers. I've dealt with every type of Karen you can imagine, but none of these customers were as bad as the woman that I dealt with last month. It was a Friday afternoon, and this elegant middle-aged woman came into the store. Instead of buying the meat in the case, she requested that I cut her steaks especially for her. Which, for the record, I don't mind doing at all, but the special steaks that she wanted I had out in my case already. The exact thickness and everything, but according to her, the ones in the back are better, which isn't true by the way. So even though she was wrong, I took care of her request and never lost my smile. I cut her five prime bone-in ribeye steaks, which is extremely good meat. She looked at it, made some comments, eventually said thank you and walked off. After she left, I didn't give it a second thought because that type of customer is not uncommon and she really didn't do anything wrong other than she was a little demanding, but nothing too bad about that. Well, on Monday afternoon, this woman returned. She walked up to the meat counter, furious, and shouted, Excuse me, even though I was already waiting on another customer. I ignored her for a few seconds, not only because I was with another customer, but because I refused to give her any attention talking like that. Fortunately for her, I was just finishing up with that other customer. I wasn't even done telling the other customer to have a good day, and again, in an angry and passive-aggressive voice, she said, Um, hello? How long are you going to make me stand here? I walked over, and somehow staying patient, I calmly said to the woman, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I was just finishing up with another customer. Uh, how can I help you today? Apparently, other customers aren't important because she started to point at me and said, I don't care about your other customers. Clearly, I'm upset, and I should take priority over anyone else. I didn't say anything and just put my head down slightly. After her, I'm the most important person ever ran, she proceeded to throw a Ziploc bag of bones on top of the meat counter, and I just looked at the bag and said, Okay, I see you got some bones. Is there something I can help you with? In one of the most vulgar and racist rants I've ever heard, the woman claimed that I gave her horrible and tough meat and that she wanted a full refund. Still keeping my cool, I explained to the woman our refund policy and explained why I couldn't refund $150 worth of steak that she ate because she claimed they weren't good. This made no sense to her, I guess. She just kept repeating, Do you know who I am? And my answer was always the same, and that simple no with a smile, which I think irritated her even more. After more disrespect, I finally insinuated that maybe she cooked the steak wrong, and that was a mistake on my part. She had to yell and lecture at me that she had been cooking longer than I'd been alive, and the fact that I could even assume such a thing is outrageous, and that she deserves something for the mistreatment she'd been receiving. Well... This back and forth continued for several minutes, until finally the store manager and security showed up to escort the woman out of the store. While she was being escorted out, she kept yelling, You're going to be sorry. You have no idea who you're messing with. 
Finally, she was out of the store, and the only reason why she left was that the security guard threatened to call the police if she didn't leave, and apparently, that was enough to get her to go. We all laughed about this for a while and joked for the rest of the shift. That night, I went home and met up with all my boys and hung out. I shared the story and we all kind of laughed and shared other stories of other crazy customers. The next day came and some of the employees were still talking about the encounter. I was over it and just wanted to do my job. After all, I'm sure I would have had another customer like this in no time. I worked my shift and it was ultimately a pretty slow day. When I left work, I had a note on my windshield that said, You're going to be sorry. Now I know the initial reaction of some people will be shocked, but I just laughed. I was sure that it was one of my friends or a coworker just messing with me. After a day or two of nobody confessing to leaving the note, we looked at the cameras, and to my horror, it was that insane woman from a few days ago. I was in shock. The worst part was, after she placed the note, she stood by my car for several minutes before she walked out of sight of the camera. We went back to Monday on the camera where she came in and made a scene. After she got kicked out, she waited in the parking lot until I left. After I got into my car, she can be seen driving just a few seconds behind my car, and we notified the authorities and reported the information that we had, but that's pretty much where the story ends. I still don't know who this woman is, if I'm still in danger or if I was ever really in danger to begin with. All I know is some people are crazy. And honestly, people, just be kind. We're all doing the best we can. Well, most of us, anyway. I'm not sure how scary this story will be, but it was definitely one of the most traumatic experiences of my entire life. I was never one to call people Karens. It seems stupid and honestly sometimes just plain mean. One day, though... I learned the true definition of what a Karen is, and ever since that day, I'll always stand up for the victim in Karen situations. A few days ago, I was taking my girlfriend at the time to a beautiful romantic picnic that I planned. At the time, we had been together for about six months, and just for the record, my girlfriend in this story is now my wife and we're expecting our first child in the fall. We made the scenic drive and listened to music the entire way. I was already madly in love with this chick and I planned on telling her for the first time in this picnic. When we parked, I rushed out of the car to open the door for my girlfriend. One, it was a chivalrous thing to do, but it was also an inside joke with me and my girlfriend. We would fight to get the door for each other, and honestly, we still do that to this day. So I opened the door for her, and she got out of the car smiling and thanked me for being a gentleman. She was being sarcastic, and we both laughed like the dumb little lovebirds that we were. As I shut the door, I saw a woman, probably in her late 30s, approaching the car. She was waving her hand and pointing at me. I didn't think she was gesturing to me, so I sort of just ignored her. When I took a few steps away from the car, she basically got in front of me and started to yell at me. She pulled out her cell phone and started to record me. It was like that gotcha style of recording. She was in my face with her phone, saying, You're no gentleman. You're a pig. All men are the same. I just smiled and walked past her. My girlfriend was laughing too and we just ignored this crazy woman. Well, ignoring her proved to be an Olympic feat. She was following us, never putting down her phone and ceasing her horrible comments towards me and my awful existence, I guess. And finally, I turned around and admittedly, my voice had some anger in it and I said, Please leave us alone. I've done nothing to you. You're harassing us. I swear that what happened next still leaves me slightly speechless. She literally started to scream and threw herself on the ground. She began to cry and said that I struck her, which wasn't even remotely true. Instead of turning around and walking away, I shouted, Oh, come on, lady, get up. I didn't even touch you. Due to her constant screaming, it didn't take long for some onlookers to approach the situation. Another woman was frantic and demanded to know what happened. Before I could even get the words out, the woman started to cry and claimed that I knocked her down because she was exposing me for what I am. Of course, I just laughed and that's when I realized everyone around us thought that I was the bad guy. Everyone was helping this woman and they even called the police. 
I welcomed that because I was ready to turn this woman in for basically ruining my day at this point. While we waited for the cops, a few older couples approached me and told me that I should be ashamed of myself and other things like that. I couldn't even believe what was happening. When the cops showed up, I approached them and before I could even plead my case, the cop told me to shut up and that they were looking for the woman who called the police. She told the cops that I assaulted the woman laying on the ground and that I laughed about the situation. Well, the cops handcuffed me and they wouldn't even let me explain my story. Not everyone in this story is a complete moron, though. As the cops were ignoring me and walking me to the squad car, another bystander ran over. A young woman, probably in her early 20s, told the police that the woman faked the entire thing and that she had a video. And I couldn't believe what I'd heard and saw. This young woman did have a video literally recorded the entire interaction, and as soon as the woman started yelling at me, she thought that maybe it could get ugly, so she started to record it. The video showed the woman throwing herself on the ground with no help for me. I mean, the angle couldn't have been more perfect. There were at least three feet between me and the woman, and the video also showed that all these people that were helping this Karen weren't witnesses and couldn't speak about what happened. I mean, it was several minutes until another onlooker approached the situation, and the cops eventually uncuffed me, and instead of arresting the Karen, they basically just left not wanting anything to do with the situation. Good cops in my hometown, I know. And I tried pressing charges, but honestly, nothing happened. I didn't even know what this woman's name is, and that's why I continue to call her Karen. And even more disturbingly, though, is that I don't know what her endgame was. Like, what was she getting out of that situation? I've told this story a handful of times, and a lot of people are shocked at my mistreatment. I can't believe the cops basically ignored me and just arrested me without any knowledge of the situation. I understand the job is hard and stressful and dealing with this petty garbage is a waste of time, but I was innocent. And who knows what would have happened to me if that woman didn't come forward with that video proving so. The story I'm about to share took place about four to five years ago at this point. My husband and I were in our first house together after we got married. We slowly started doing some necessary upgrades to the house, trying to knock off some smaller projects before the large ones. However, one of the main upgrades we needed immediately was a new fence. The house had a chain link fence, but with our two huge dogs, we knew that we needed a tall wooden fence as soon as possible. Our dogs are very protective and I wouldn't trust them being outside with neighbors or other animals with just a chain fence. We got a few quotes from local companies and eventually found one that would do a fancier cedar fence cheaper than other companies that were doing a standard picket fence. We were excited to get started so we didn't have to continuously check our backyard every time we wanted to let the dogs out. The new fence, in our opinion, was going to be extremely nice looking and even came with fancy metal toppers on the large posts. As everyone does, we had to present copies of the land survey and get it approved by the town, but before we knew it, the workers were here tearing the chain link fence down in preparation for building. I remember it being extremely rainy when they came to remove the old fence and was really impressed by them working through such poor weather conditions. The first day the company began tearing down the fence, we got a knock at the door, which I figured was just one of the workers. However, it was someone I didn't recognize. It was a middle-aged woman who was continuously banging on the door. Thrilled that my dogs were going ballistic, I opened the door and said, Can I help you? But before I could even finish, she interrupted. Why are you tearing the fence down? Excuse me, I said. In a very passive-aggressive tone, she responded by saying, I'm your neighbor to the left, and I want to know why you're tearing down the fence. I responded, well, we decided to upgrade our fence and install a wooden one. We got two large dogs and we can't really have a small chain link fence that you could get over if you see the people in their backyards. She then went on to say that it wasn't just our choice and that a wooden fence would be an eyesore and a bunch of other stuff that I honestly don't remember. I quickly thanked her for her concern and closed the door. I remember looking out the window and seeing her lurk around the yard staring at the workers and just looking overall miserable. 
We didn't hear anything else for what I think was a few days until our doorbell started ringing in the middle of the night. It happened once on a random Tuesday or Wednesday night and neither of us got up out of bed and chalked it up to an accident. But on the second night that it happened, we sprung out of bed and then down to the door. After trying to see if anyone was on the front porch, we decided to open the door and look outside. We couldn't see anyone in the near vicinity and had no idea who was doing this to us. The next day we decided to go out and buy some cameras for the property. We purchased three cameras in total, a doorbell camera, one near the garage and driveway and one for the backyard. We decided to install them right away and thought that it might be helpful for the rest of the fence installation in case they needed to contact us, they could use the ring doorbell. The construction on the new fence was scheduled to happen in three or four days. My husband and I were at work and we got a notification from the ring doorbell system saying someone was at the front door. I was busy in a meeting, but my husband called me shortly after. He told me that there was some lady at the door saying that she was going to protest our fence with the town and that we should be ashamed of ourselves that we are coming into the neighborhood and tearing down fences. I told him to just try and ignore it. Do not engage. And as soon as the new fence was up, we wouldn't have to see any of our neighbors whether we were inside or outside. Fast forward two nights and my husband and I are fast asleep in bed when one of our dogs woke us up trying to get into the bed. Now, Lily never got onto the bed, so we realized that this was a little out of character. And when she got onto the bed, she just stood there. She didn't lie down, she just stood on the bed panting. We decided to get up and try to let her outside. We had put her on her leash to take her to the backyard because the old fence was down and the new fence wasn't built quite yet. I offered to take her out and as she was walking around, I heard my husband sort of yell whisper, Babe, get inside now. We hustled inside and I asked what was going on. He said that we had gotten an activity hit on another one of our cameras and when he looked at the footage, he saw that a woman had been surveying our property and that she was now standing against the garage, literally pressed directly against it. At first, I thought he was joking, but after looking at his face, I could tell that he was dead serious. We went and looked at the live footage, and the person was now on their hands and knees, looking like they were trying to pry their way under the garage door to open it. I couldn't tell if it was a knife or a screwdriver or some other tool, but they were clearly using something to try and get under the door. I immediately called the police and reported an attempted break-in. The police arrived in about 15 minutes and luckily found the person still lurking around our property. And to no one's surprise, it was our neighbor. She had apparently lost it and told the police that she was trying to get in to tear the permit off our window. My husband and I did press charges but moved to a new community within about the next three to four months. We loved our new house and it's everything we ever wanted. Our neighbors are really nice as well and we get along great. I still think about the people who purchased our house and hope that psycho Karen has moved to somewhere out in the country where she can't harass anyone ever again. I love sports, specifically college football. I played one season of college football as a running back and once I realized how much work goes into playing this sport at the next level, Let's just say my college sports career didn't really last that long, but it didn't change my perspective of the game. I still love football, and about a year ago I moved across the country with my fiance. The entire time we lived on the east coast I begged her to go to any sporting event with me and she always seemed to decline. She just doesn't really care about sports and I get it. Once we moved though I had nobody to go with me. My favorite college team was playing at the hometown school and I begged my girl to come with me and probably because she felt bad for me, she finally agreed to come. Let's just say this is probably the last sporting event she'll ever attend with me. I showed up wearing the hat of my team in the opposing team stadium. I'm not one to blend into my surroundings, I guess. If I like a team, I'll represent my team no matter where I'm at. And as you might expect, I got a lot of looks and a lot of boos from the rabid hometown crowd. I usually just smile and sort of laugh it off. It's mostly harmless and people just have that competitive nature. 
We made our way to our seats and it actually looked like my fiance was having a good time. At some point during the first half of the game, I heard a voice from behind me say, Um, excuse me, you need to leave. I didn't turn around because I figured that there was no way that comment was directed at me. Then I got an aggressive poke on the back. Are you deaf? Y'all need to leave. I turned around and saw a woman standing in her seat, and she looked angry. She looked like I just stole the family pet or something. I just looked at her and made some stupid remark to myself. I could tell my girl was getting upset and I put my arm around her and just tried to tune out this woman. Well, that turned out to be nearly impossible. Almost the entire half she continued running her mouth and I mean non-stop. She wasn't even watching the game because she was preoccupied with yelling at me. Right before halftime, my team made this real big Hail Mary pass and actually scored a touchdown. I stood up and clapped and the woman screamed, Are you kidding me? Sit down or I'll make you sit down. And I couldn't take it anymore. As the time expired for the first half, I turned around and firmly said, Please shut up and why don't you leave us alone? I'm just trying to watch the game. I'm not trying to listen to your mouth and your harassment for a whole other half of football. She looked at me with daggers in her eyes and I figured I silenced her, so I turned back around and sat in my seat. Without noticing, she hit me on the head and it knocked my hat off. I jumped out of my seat with a mixture of anger and confusion. I looked back at the woman and she was running up the stairs and into the concession area. My fiancé wanted me to get the event staff, but I assured her the second half would be better. Well, I couldn't be more wrong. Just as kickoff was about to happen, I heard that horrible, shrill voice again. Right there! It's that guy right there! I turned around, and two event staff and a police officer were standing in the walkway with this woman. The officer says, Okay, sir, let's go. And he was gesturing his hand to the walkway. I can only imagine the look on my face at that moment. I asked the officer what the issue was, and he just said he didn't want to make a scene and that it would be best if I just got up quietly. I refused to leave and I asked why I was being asked to leave my seat since I did nothing wrong. And the officer then said, Listen, if you don't leave, we're going to have to force you up, and it's not going to be enjoyable for anybody. Furiously, I just get out of my seat, and as I'm walking up the stairs, I hear the woman audibly laughing, saying that it serves you right. Just to add a little positivity to the story, as I was walking up the stairs, everyone in the section, and I mean everyone, started to yell at the officer. Basically, they were defending me and telling the staff that I didn't say a word and that the woman had been harassing me the entire game. After a few minutes of this back and forth, the police officer finally decided to escort me, my fiancé, and the woman out of the game. They promised it wasn't a ban or anything like that, but to keep the peace they asked me to leave and even promised to refund my ticket. I was furious, but agreed, and the woman was not pleased. She started demanding justice and started calling the cops racist. She said the cop was only throwing her out because she was a white woman, I guess, and the cop ignored her rant all the way to the door, which was amazing by the way because it was making her even more angry, and just as we reached the parking lot, I started walking to my car, still angry beyond words. I heard the woman scream, and she even charged at me. Now I'm a bigger guy, so she didn't knock me over, but she did jump on my back and even tried to choke me out. We were still only 20 feet away from the cop who witnessed all of this, and he swiftly jumped in to intervene and arrested this insane woman. I realized that this could have ended way worse if the cop wasn't standing there, but thankfully, they were true to their word and they refunded my ticket and gave me a pass to sit in the press box, which was amazing. I've told the story to some friends that I have since made, and they tell me that I survived an encounter with a Karen. But what do you think? Was she a Karen? Or was she just some insane football fan that potentially had too much to drink? A long time ago, I got into some minor trouble when I was young and due to a court order, I had to volunteer with some kids. I was dreading this but ended up loving what I did and after my court order, I continued volunteering and coaching these kids. 
Not long after volunteering, I decided to turn my life around. I went back to school and started to study film, radio, communication, and everything else in that field. I worked a little while for a news station, which kind of sucked. I did some time with ESPN and then started working on some independent films, which led to being part of the production team for a couple of seasons of some MTV reality show. I made enough money from doing all of this that I decided to try and open my own business in my hometown. I basically was running a production company for teenagers. I would rent out cameras, microphones, lights, you name it. I would teach them how to use it and then help them with whatever they wanted to shoot. Some wanted to make movies with their friends, some wanted to make music videos, some just wanted to learn how production works. I noticed more and more kids wanted to learn production so I decided that I would teach how to do interviews in the street and then we would edit the footage together later. Little did I know. I was about to get some insane footage. We went to a strip mall near the studio. We set up the camera on the sidewalk and started to record some B-roll footage and minor interviews. I did alert the shop that we were closest to that I was going to be there shooting footage outside of the sidewalk just as a common courtesy, which they were fine with, but even if they weren't, shooting footage on the sidewalk is completely legal and they wouldn't have been able to kick me off. Everything was going great and until we met this horrible woman, whom I'll call Karen in this story. She flipped out and I couldn't record her, and I assured her that I wasn't recording her without her permission. I then tried to explain what I was doing and she told me to shut up and that I needed to leave right away. I kind of laughed it off and told her to have a nice day and she kicked over my tripod. Thankfully I was able to react and catch it before my $8,000 camera hit the ground. I remained calm and didn't engage with the woman in front of the kids. I started to actually use this as a teaching moment. I explained to the kids that sometimes you will get people that are angry and upset and it's best to just ignore them and stand your ground. I don't think people like this woman like to be ignored though. She started to swear in front of the kids and she told me that she was calling the cops because I didn't have a permit. I asked her if she could explain to me what permit I needed to shoot footage on a public sidewalk and she said that I needed some sort of news permit, otherwise shooting any type of footage outside is technically illegal. Then she told me that she was a lawyer, and that I needed to listen to her because she was telling the truth. I continued ignoring her, and I told the kids to continue recording and working on the footage. She threw her hands up, and she started dialing 911. So after she got off the phone, she came over and sort of laughing and stood right in front of my lens. I asked her a few times to please move and she said, I'll move when the cops show up and arrest you. I could tell my kids were nervous and didn't know what to expect. I admit I was a little nervous too because I didn't know if the cop was going to know the rules about cameras and public sidewalks. The cop showed up and walked up to the woman and said, ma'am, you need to leave right now. She started yelling at the cop that I needed a permit to film here and the cop literally laughed in her face and said, ma'am, it's public property. If anything, you're disturbing the peace. But I think my favorite moment of the entire story was when the woman yelled at the cop saying, I'm a lawyer, to which the cop replied in a sort of stoic voice, No, you're not. All the kids started to cheer as the cop walked away, and then, no surprise, the woman started to cry. I mean, little kid temper tantrum crying. She ran off screaming, and we continued the rest of the day with no issues. A few hours later we were walking to the van and all four of my tires were slashed and the side of the van was keyed. I tried reporting it but of course where I was parked was a blind spot on the security camera. I knew that it was that woman though. She somehow found out what I was driving and destroyed my car but unfortunately I had no proof of it. I was able to strike a deal with one of the businesses in the strip mall to do a commercial for them if I could look at their security camera which was directly across from where I parked. I looked at the footage and just like I guessed, there she was. She circled the van about four times on foot. She looked apprehensive like she didn't know if this was the right vehicle or not which she didn't. It makes me think that she just assumed it was mine and slashed the tires anyway. The worst part was. She got into a car that was parked only a few cars away from the van in the lot and she stayed there for a while while I called the police and dealt with the towing company and the kid's parents. When I finally got a ride is when she finally left the lot. On camera she followed my ride, but that's the last I saw of her though.
She must not have followed me, though. I did report it, of course, but thankfully that's where the story ends. I'm not sure if she ever got caught or what, and I do miss that job. I'm back to working in this industry full time, but one day I plan on retiring and picking up this type of work again, and next time I'll make sure that I teach a lesson on how to deal with Karens before we actually hit the field. This is a crazy story that happened to me a little less than a year ago involving a Karen. I have an Aunt Karen, so I apologize to any actual Karens out there, but if any woman deserves to be called Karen, it's the woman I'm sharing with you today. I was doing some shopping at Target for my boyfriend's birthday. I admit I was just using the birthday as an excuse to go to Target. I spent a bunch of time there going through clothes, stuff for the house, and just overall doing Target things. Being that it was a Saturday afternoon, it was slightly busy and unfortunately, some customers are rude. I worked for Target when I was 18 and I know how horrible it can be sometimes, so I always try to be nice to the employees because honestly, the job sucks. After my shopping was complete, I took my basket to the checkout lane and waited to be cashed out. I noticed the cashier was a young girl that couldn't have been older than 16 years old and she seemed new and she looked lost. I watched her cash out two people and they both had small orders and she struggled with those simple orders. I could see the confusion written on the poor girl's face. After those two customers, the woman in front of me in the line greeted the young lady with a, your time may not be precious, but some of us actually prefer not to wait in line all day. I couldn't believe what she just said. The cashier looked at the woman and before the transaction even started, the girl looked upset and almost on the verge of tears. I will say I realize that being that upset may be a little bit much, but when you're nervous, anxious, and overwhelmed, and confused, it's easy for the emotions to kind of take over. The girl started to scan the woman's items very slowly, and the woman started huffing and puffing. It was starting to get uncomfortable to watch, to be honest, and the woman then said, Could you move faster? My god, it's not that hard to scan some items. Anybody can do it. Well, almost anybody. Clearly not you. The girl's face was all red and I could see her eyes welling up even more. To make matters worse, while the woman was sighing, the girl accidentally scanned an item twice and she didn't know how to avoid the item off the transaction. Without giving her a second to figure it out, the woman exploded. She says, Are you kidding me? Where does Target find these idiots? Is there a manager anywhere around? I need to speak to one right away. I finally spoke up and said, listen lady, relax, clearly she's new and doing the best she can. And she told me to shut up, point blank, and I just shook my head in disbelief. The woman kept looking around for a manager and thankfully nobody was walking over. And while she was waiting for a manager to come over, the young woman successfully voided the item which the older woman would have realized if she wasn't making a scene. The young lady then tried to tell her the total, to which the woman just threw a coupon at her. She was barking at the girl to just scan it, but then the young girl made my day by saying that the coupon was expired and that she wasn't allowed to take it. And that was the final straw. The woman lost her mind, screaming. I then told her again to relax and the girl was just doing her job and she wasn't going to get fired for some coupon. Well, the woman didn't like me interjecting and she picked up a pack of gum off the shelf and actually threw it at me. At this point, security finally came over and was beginning to escort her out of the target. Everyone was cheering and I made sure the young girl was okay and she claimed that she was, even though I could see how visibly shaken up she had been. I eventually cashed out and walked to my car. I sat in my car for a few minutes and texted my boyfriend about the situation I just witnessed and also caught up on the text messages I received while I was shopping. About 10 minutes into my drive home, I noticed that a red car had been following me for quite a while, and they were following rather close on top of that. I was on the highway so I couldn't get a good look at the driver, but when I switched lanes, they switched lanes. When I sped up, they sped up. I thought maybe I was just being paranoid, but this just felt weird. When I got off the highway, I was at a red light about a mile away from my house, and I finally got a good look at the driver behind me. 
I couldn't believe my eyes. It was that wretched woman from Target. I didn't know what to do, and I felt like this woman was following me home. I decided to be safe rather than sorry, and I called the police. I told them what happened, and that I thought the woman was following me. They told me to park outside a house on my street, but not my actual home, just in case. They told me that they would be sending a patrol car right now, and that they should be arriving around the same time. I was anxious, and I didn't know what to expect. I got to my street and parked about 50 yards away from my house, and you guessed it, the Karen parked right behind me. I locked my doors and didn't leave my car. She got right out and started to storm toward my vehicle. She was running her mouth and yelling at me and I was just hoping that the police would show up any second. As soon as she was right outside my door, she actively tried opening the door even though they were locked. I started to record everything just in case and in the video the woman was saying, put the phone down, open the door, come on, let's just talk. And seconds later, I could see the lights from the cop car and the cops rushed over. She started to scream right away and claimed that she was the victim and that I was cutting her off on the road. It turns out she lives about 15 miles in the complete opposite direction, so her logic of cutting her off the entire way home made no sense. And thankfully they hauled her off, but she didn't seem to get charged and for some reason I didn't press charges either. I'm a little anxious now when I go out in front because I half expect to see that Karen is out there waiting on my street for me. Even though I was parked a few houses down, she could easily remember my car. I never saw her again and to my knowledge she never returned to my street. I don't know if I will ever be comfortable walking on my street alone because I'm sure the first time I go out front, that will be the day that she decides to pay me another visit. I'm sure everyone out there has heard of Karens. All you gotta do is Google Karen videos and you'll be flooded with dozens of videos of outrageously horrible, self-entitled women. But you know, a Karen doesn't always have to be a woman. A lot of the time, if not most of the time, men can be horrible and they definitely deserve to be called Karens as well. And what would you call a male Karen? Darren, maybe? Either way, this story happened just a few months ago with what I like to call a Darren, and I think you'll agree. He fits the Karen prototype, and I think you also see that this story is very unsettling. My husband had to go to work, so I decided to take our son to the zoo. My son's only six years old, and he loves the zoo. He also loves animals. Now, let me just say that I can't speak for all zoos, but at least the zoos in this area really do care for their animals. I know a lot of people think it's animal cruelty or whatever, but it's really not. I used to date a zookeeper and he and his co-workers all studied animal science in college and provided the utmost care for the animals. I'm sure, just like anything else, there are horrible people in that industry, but all zoos I've encountered have been wonderful. Anyway, we arrived at the zoo at around 11 in the morning. Outside of the zoo was a group of protesters though, and they were protesting against the zoo and speaking about how the zookeepers were horrible and about animal cruelty and all that. I basically walked right by the group and one of the men stopped me and told me that I didn't know what I was doing and that I should be ashamed of myself that I would bring a child to the zoo. I yelled at the guy and told him to leave me alone. I walked past them and informed the zoo staff of the protesters and what the man said to me but unfortunately there wasn't anything that could be done since they were technically protesting on public grounds. We spent several hours at the zoo. We took pictures, had some laughs, and we saw a ton of animals. It was a great day and I honestly forgot all about the protesters until it was time to leave the zoo and that's when the story takes a rough turn. We went to the gift shop and I bought my son a snow leopard hat since that was his favorite animal. When we were walking to the car, that man confronted us again and he actually started to harass my son because of his hat and continued to claim that I was a horrible mother. I was biting my tongue trying not to say anything in front of my son, but I'm not going to lie, it was hard. Then the man did something I still can't believe. He followed us to the car and when we reached the car, he threw himself onto the car, basically making it impossible to leave. It was his form of protest, I guess. No matter what I said, he wasn't moving, and he just kept reminding me how horrible I am and that I should be ashamed. I told him I was going to call the police, and that changed his tune quickly. 
He started acting like some victim in the situation and continued to tell me that I didn't know what I was talking about. I pulled out my phone and he finally backed away. I never really called the police but I did hold the phone up to my ears as though I were calling them. I got into the car and I saw the man run away. I figured this horrible situation was finally over but apparently the nightmare was just beginning. That night I told my husband all about the encounter and of course he wished that he was there so he could have punched the guy but I was just happy that it was all over. That night at around 1 in the morning our doorbell rang. We both jumped out of bed and I started to feel this weird panic thinking that it must have been an emergency. When my husband looked out the window he said that there was a man at the door, a man he didn't recognize. I looked out the window and I almost threw up. It was very clearly that protester from the zoo. I instinctively screamed go away and I hear this man reply in a muffled voice that I just want to talk about the animals. Let me in for a while. I'm sure I can change your mind, he says. And this was all my husband needed to hear. He kicked open the door and confronted the man. The man ran like some track star in the opposite direction. He must not have known that I was married because I saw the look of genuine fear in his eyes. My husband didn't chase him and we figured that it would just be best to call the police. We reported the situation and the cops said that they would be vigilant but I don't think they ever caught this dude. After speaking with the cops they figured that the protester guy must have seen my car and followed me home that day from the zoo. The more I thought about it though, the more I remembered the afternoon when he finally got off of my car and ran. He ran out of sight so it's not impossible to believe that he got into his car and followed me, at least that's what the police said. We never had another strange encounter thankfully. My husband slept in the living room for the next six months, waiting every night for another ring at the doorbell but it never came again. This Darren or Karen went from trying to lecture me on how terrible of a mother I am to showing up at my doorstep in the middle of the night. I don't know what he wanted that evening but what I do know is that I'm happy. I never have to find out. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7pm EST. And there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, and you might even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narration and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all of these stories and big compilations, and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends, and remember to shave the bear first.